questions for uh, Paul Hawk to get in. I guess, Coleman, what was it like kind of watch Terrence take over at the end of that first half? And what did he give you guys tonight? Yeah, no, I thought uh, Terrence did a great job, uh, you know, warring over ball screens, uh, getting stops and getting on in transition like he always does, and then, you know, hitting his shots. Um, he, he was great, you know, catch and shoot, sh catch, great catch and shoot guy, spacing the floor, um, handling the ball. Um, so, no, I thought Terrence played a, 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 did a really good job tonight. Um, just all around, uh, doing a little bit of everything. So, it's Coleman kind of following up on that. Like when you guys were able to get out in transition, like you did tonight, and like some like you did against Michigan State. Like, how what does that change for this team? Yeah, no, it makes us uh, a lot better. Um, you know, I, I think offensively, a lot of times we could get whatever we want. I think it's just really focusing on getting those stops and getting out and running. Um, you know, coach always draws up on the board, defend, rebound, run. Uh, so those are our three keys to victory every time. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job of that tonight. So, Quincy, Coleman's playing at such a high level right now. What's it like to play alongside him, and what are you seeing from him right now? Man, yeah, I love playing with Coleman. Uh, if you open, he's going to find you. He's really, his IQ is really good. Uh, he can space the floor. Like Coach said, he's probably the best, the best uh, pick and pop five uh, shooter in uh, in the country. So. Uh, he just got to keep doing what he's doing for our team. Um, he's just playing at a high level, especially def defensively. He's, he's great. Yes, Quincy, every time we talk to you, we talk about defense and rebounding. And, and just for you guys tonight, you got a much better defensive performance than we'd seen. Like, What was behind that? And, and what's key for you guys to kind of write that down the stretch in February? I mean, it's all about effort. Um, I think if we're, we're, we're locked in defensively and uh, thinking about rebounding, we, we're going to be the best team in the country. And we just got to keep doing what we're doing and uh, get better every day. Quincy, along those same lines, um, they started out with a, a few offensive rebounds early, and then you kind of shut them down on the defensive glass. Was that was that a point of emphasis yeah. he heading into this game? Yeah, because when we when we defensive rebound, we we can run offensively transition. So um, you know, with TJ, uh, nobody can stop him in transition. So, uh, like I said, it's all about us rebounding and being locked in and. Uh, communicate on defense and do it, do all the right things. Uh, when you played Michigan the first time in Ann Arbor, they had Doug McDaniel available. Obviously that wasn't the case today. Is the game plan different knowing Michigan will or won't have him? Like what are those changes if you can say? Uh, no, uh, there's not, not, nothing different. Uh, we knew uh, um, Jalen uh, was going to, you know, he's, he's been playing at a high level as well, just like anybody else on, uh, just like Doug when, you know, whenever he plays. So uh, we, we kind of had the same mindset. We wanted to pressure the ball a little bit more. That was some a little bit different. But uh, as far as doing what we do, uh, we stayed the same. You know, force try to force them to take tough twos, limit their three-pointers. So uh, we kind of schemed kind of the same way, just wanted to pressure the ball a little bit more. Uh, for either or both of you, um, they're not particularly deep. They had, you know, a few guys that didn't make the trip to this game. Did, did you, did you sense them wearing down at all as, as the game went on fatigue being a factor? Uh, not necessarily. Um, uh, I, th I think we are aware, you know, they have those guys, uh, they're starting five that plays a lot of minutes. Um, but you know, another key thing for us is not letting other guys impact the game. And I think we did a pretty good job of that tonight. Um, you know, uh, uh, Ch Cheddar hit a few late, got a few rebounds late, but other than that, um, now we, we kind of zoned in on those five guys that, that play a lot of minutes and just don't let those other guys impact the game. Coleman, what were you most encouraged about defensively tonight? And what'd you like about pressuring maybe a little bit more? Yeah. Um, just kind of not letting guys get comfortable. Uh, you know, when we watch the film in Michigan state, you know, we saw Hogard picking us up full court, pressuring our guards, and then, uh, you know, we were just letting them run our offense on the other end. Uh, so it's kind of just being more disruptive, um, crawling up in people, uh, limiting straight line drives, uh, and then defensively really worn over ball screens and pursuing. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, our guards were getting clipped, and I'd be in a kind of more of a two-on-one situation, and it was hard for me to pick when I wanted to switch or, 
uh, when I, you know, when I want to get back to my man. And, you know, there's still a few glimpses of that tonight. You know, uh, Reed got got a, a lob or two tonight. Uh, so we still got some things to clean up on that end. But you know, I think we did a, a good job, a better job of pressuring the ball a little bit more and just making and disrupting their timing of their offense. I mean, Coleman, I think you've got 17 assists in the last three games. Has there just been something in this stretch where you felt like you've been able to facilitate a little more? Yeah, I mean, um, I think a lot of teams have just been trying to throw so many different defenses at us. Uh, tonight, you know, they went to a zone, and then whenever I'd get a catch, they'd match up. They call, They made a five call, which was a call for them to ma start matching up. And um, I felt like the ball was just in my hands, and – Every time I'm aggressive, you know, um, I feel like it's it's easier for me to, uh, you know, find those guys on open assist. And then whenever we get out in transition, chew to just pitching the ball ahead. Uh, like I was telling them, if, if this was the NBA, I'd have 12 assists tonight. Quincy's the uh, pass and one pump fake and one dribble dunk. You know, that's a dunk or that's an assist in the NBA. But uh, I'm I'm happy the way I'm sharing the ball right now. So, all right, thanks guys. Thank you. So, you know, I'm used to a bag of popcorn. <laughs> um, Chiefs are still Super Bowl champions. Different focus tonight. Um, I think you guys found out in, the other day I wasn't very happy. Um, just in our, in our pregame conversations and and uh, uh, I've spent two days just trying to reconnect this team in terms of what we do on the defensive side and how we go about it and having having a little um, emphasis on that and it's amazing how offense becomes easier when you don't worry about it and uh, I thought tonight was a great example of that I thought uh, I didn't know Terrence had 31 until I, I post game. Um, but he, he guarded the basketball like he did early, and 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 we got connected that way, and and that makes things easier for us. But I but I thought our emphasis last two days we didn't work one second on offense. Uh, we knew they were going to play a little zone. We worked on that today and shoot around. But it's all been about the defensive side and just getting back to to, to guarding. And uh, the only thing that we didn't do um, on that side today was loose balls uh, and just come up with them. We got to be much better at that. That didn't impact this game, but it can impact us in March. So um, Coleman was fantastic. Um, I thought he set the tone when they went to zone, getting the ball in the middle to him, and he just sprays it. And you know, the last thing he does is look to score, but he throws that thing out and and gets gets TJ a couple wide open threes, um, you know, fifty percent from the three point line. Uh, you'll take that every night. Twelve of them. I've, you know, I keep wishing we would shoot more, but um, but tonight was a solid night. And then I thought defensively, we talked a lot about keeping them off the three point line. I thought that was the one way they could beat us. Uh, as if Williams and uh, Namari and and Llewellyn made threes, uh, they throw one in in the last minute. Um, so we did a great job there following the game plan and uh, all in all, a good night. Brad, what do you think or what encouraged you most about the defense? Coleman said being more aggressive, pressing those guys a little bit. Maybe you liked that a little bit. What yeah, did you like? We guarded the ball. We weren't eight feet off the ball. We guarded it. We actually connected with it, and and um, you know we were a team with size and 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 length. We're not. We don't have Trent. Um, you know, so we're not, we're not going to be that. We're we're more a team that we have to challenge. We have to rear view contest. We have to 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 keep chasing guys, and and instead, I think we got really comfortable just funneling them into Coleman. And, um, you know, and then and then taking the easy way out by calling a switch. And, 
we basically eliminated that tonight. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what we did early and it got us to seventh or whatever we were in the country and, you know, get back to being mean and nasty. Offensively, you guys, you say you didn't really work on offense, but those guys, it seemed like the ball was moving tonight, much better execution, cutting, you know, when they would come double, just seemed like you had a great game plan, even though you maybe didn't work a lot on it. What is that just a testament to the age and skills of your guys? Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, I, it, it, it's the, the, I don't want to say we weren't focused on it. We talked about, it. we knew, we knew what they were going to do. Um, but, you know, putting a game plan, you know, we're going to, we've had to adjust almost every game. So it's made, it's, it's been running your base stuff because teams have cross matched as teams have done this or that. Um, and, and we've had to counter that, you know, the Michigan state game, we posted Coleman a ton against the guard. Uh, so we've had to adjust some things. So it, it's been more on the fly, making some adjustments. Um, but yeah, veteran team did that. But again, I think it still goes back to the emphasis being on the other end, and that's what's gonna that's what's gonna win. We I mean, we got a number five. We're number five in the country on on offense. So probably moved up after tonight, I would think. But um, we we got to understand what wins. Offense is fleeting, and and we got to fig keep figuring out how to win when when the ball doesn't go in. And I know you talked about reconnecting and the emphasis on defense. I'm just wondering if there's anything from the last two days that you could paint us a picture of kind of what that looked like to to spark that attention to defense and that shift we lost losing i mean you, there, there's two things that happen when you lose you either learn from it or you accept it and we have a great locker room and and we're not going to we're not going to accept that and and if anybody liked giving up nine out of ten um uh, and when the game's on the line against michigan state when we have an eight point lead and control the game then they don't need to be in that locker room and it, it that, that and this is a really smart group. It's a cerebral group, and and so losing, losing's brutal. I mean, it's in my world it is, and uh, so they don't accept it, and we learned from it, and we talked about it, we showed film, and then we went out to try to correct it. Brad, you mentioned it with Terrence on the ball. Uh, how much can he be a tone setter there, and how did you see him embrace that tonight? It's what he does. He's 6'6", 220 pounds. He's athletic as anybody in America. Um, you know, he he's a guy that uh, um, has to want to be that guy. That's his – that's – that's. Um, and then he finds his way to 30. You know, he finds his way to 20. Terrence is going to score 20 most nights um, just by being out there. And uh, – uh, but – that's his impact on us. And and everything starts on the defensive side. When you see somebody sitting down in garden, um, I took him out in the first half. He's one possession. He stood up. He got back screen. He wasn't ready to play. Get out. Uh, and if you're not going to be ready to play all the time, then I'm not going to play you. And and he's he's such a, uh, a, a focal point of teams on the other end. He needs to be a focal point of what he does on that end because he's really, really good at it. To dovetail off that point, Brad, you had said when Terrence got back, it was just going to take time. It was you were you were going to have to wait on him and take time. What was the plan for him, and what was the plan for the four other guys on the floor as you guys waited? I don't want to say I had a plan because I don't. Then I'd be disappointed if it wasn't met. And, and, and so you always want things. I'm very impatient. You always want something sooner than it happened, but you're, you're real, you're realistic. He was gone for a long time and, and, and coming back, we were in a pretty good groove offensively. And, and, um, um, so it, it, it just almost had to happen organically. It, it had to happen in the right, in the right way without any pressure to, to go do this or go do that. And, and, and I think he's, he's, uh, uh, he's handled that in a, in a, in a pretty good way. I think he was tw averaging 23 a game in his last three coming in and we truly haven't run much to him. And, uh, but re-engaging him on that end has the ability to take us to another level. Coach, they had, they had four, like four early offensive rebounds and very, very little after that. Was there, was there a point where your team just got dialed in on the defensive glass? Yeah. And Doug, it's one of the things we talked about. I think they were number one in the league in the last five games. They were averaging almost 13 offensive rebounds a game. And um, 
uh, we felt like that's the one area that they could they could really hurt us. And usually when you get an offensive rebound, you either get a layup and a foul or you get a kick out three. And I was petrified of the threes. And uh, um, again, we we fumbled a couple balls and we should have had. And but um, we we I don't know what the margin ended up 10, 10, 9. But what it and and I think that's one of the things that you know I felt pretty good about because that. They're they're big and they're physical. I guess as a coach to have a guy like Terrence that can score twenty or thirty, and you don't have to just run set after set to do that. I know. I guess what's the the comfort or the advantage or just the I'm not sure how to phrase that, but just to, to know you've got that in your back pocket. Well, I think he, when he starts shooting the three, like he's shooting the three, then he becomes a really really hard guard, and and again. Um, Ty, Coleman, Marcus are all really good playmakers. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what he does on the defensive end triggers what he does on the offensive end. He gets out in transition. If I could ever get him to be a six, seven defensive rebound a game guy, he'd get another four or six points. He scored four or six the other night at Michigan State on the offensive glass. If I could ever get him consistently to go to the offensive glass, He'd find another four or six points there. He just knows how to find baskets. And he doesn't need a lot of help doing that. And getting to the free throw line and uh, all those things factor in. But, um, yeah, he's he's he, he finds points in a, in, a, in a lot of different ways, and his teammates find him because they're all playmakers. Coach, to kind of piggyback on that 50% three-point shooting tonight, how much does, of a relief is it for you to kind of see those shots fall in, especially with the recent struggles here at home? You guys make that up, not me. I mean, I that's I, I I rely so little on offense, and and you guys think I'm nuts. I know because it's so fleeting, and it it, it can come and it can go. And it, is it great to have one of those nights? We yeah, we've had a few. Um, is it something I worry about? Most of the time, I just want them to keep shooting them and and shoot more of them. Um, so I don't, I don't I don't really concern myself with it. When we're taking good shots and the right shots, I'm 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 all in because really good shots are hard to find. Brad Luke's usually one of the first ones off the bench. What was the reason behind him kind of coming in later? Yeah, in nothing, game? just kind of just kind of a, um, you know, Luke's 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 a tremendous shooter. He's he's fighting, he's competing, and just kind of a, stayed with a little group a little longer and. And uh, you know that was kind of what the what the game needed on the on the defensive side. So he'll be he'll be fine. In the last three games now, Coleman's got 17 assists. I mean, has there just been? I mean, the opportunity's got to be there. But has there been? Have you seen something from him where he's facilitating at a, a higher level like that? Yeah. Other than his no, no look pass against Michigan State, he's been he's just made. Now yeah, he, he he tried to throw a back cut. Um, he's made really smart plays and simple plays and, and, you know, obviously somebody has got to finish him, but, um, you know, Coleman's the game's really slow for Coleman, uh, mentally, he just sees it. He understands it. Uh, he's, he's never sped up and, um, you know, and then he playing in space has been great for him because he's shooting the cover off of it. So teams are all, you know, they were barking all night, shooter, 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 every time he touched it. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty gifted that way. Thank you guys.